Rhetorical Quest. I feel like in order to understand uh, what exactly is going on uh, in these relationships and understanding the coming together portions and understanding the coming apart portions, that we really need to understand what are the forces that drive us both into and out of relationship. And some of the forces that drive us into and out of relationship are known as our relational dialectics. Our relational dialectics, a dialectic is when two ideas oppose each other. This is a dialectic. And so sometimes we can talk about the dialectical system in our judicial system, where one side, the prosecution, opposes the defense, or the defense uh, uh, opposes the prosecution. That's a dialectical system. Uh, when we have a two-party system in our government, we have a dialectical system, where is the, the uh, majority party and the minority party. This is a dialectical system. We also have dialectics at work within us. These are ideas that we need them. We need both sides of them. And yet, fulfilling one side means the other side is lost. I'm going to go ahead and get into it because I think that's the best place to start. The first dialectic, the relational dialectic, is that we have simultaneously a need for autonomy and a need for connectedness. Uh, autonomy and connectedness. Autonomy is our ability to decide for ourselves what's going on in our lives, to make these decisions without having other people try to affect us. Connectedness is the other people affecting us. We need that too. We need people to come into our lives and to be a part of something that's bigger than just ourselves. And whenever we become part of something that is bigger than just ourselves, we lose our autonomy. We have a need for both favoritism and impartiality. Favoritism and impartiality is our second dialectic. We have a need to be seen as special. We need to be seen as special. And whenever we, and we also have a need to be seen as equals. Now see, that's kind of a difficult thing to be seen everybody at the same level, except for that we're special. You understand that mo the moment somebody is seen as special, they're no longer seen as being, as being impartial. They can no longer be treated fairly, they're treated in a special way. We have a need for novelty, and we have a need for predictability. It's nice to know what's going on in our lives. Uh, we wake up in the morning, we get in our cars, we drive to work, we're pretty comfortable with the whole thing, and as long as it goes at an even kill, we need that. And it's no fun if you get to work and they say, sorry, you're fired. That, we don't want that. We don't want to, uh, that. <laughs> no. See, we have this need for novelty and this need for predictability. And as long as we're meeting one, the other is lacking. We have a need to be open and a need to be closed. This is also a need for privacy, is the need for closeness. We have a need to be open. We have the need to be able to tell people to, to be able to tell our partners anything. And we have the need not to tell them anything. See, these two things are simultaneously going on in all of us. And it becomes really, really difficult to figure out which you should do. We have a need for both instrumentality and affection. Our need for instrumentality means we need to be appreciated for what we do. We need for people to look at what we do and see, this is really amazing, this is neat. But we also have a need for unconditional affection. And see, this is the thing. When, as soon as you appreciate what somebody's doing for you, then it's not unconditional anymore because it's what they did for you. So our need for unconditional affection and our need to be appreciated for what we do are in conflict. 
we have a need for equality and we have a need for inequality, for superiority. We need to feel superior. Everybody does. And yet we also need to feel equal. These two things coming together, these are what drive us into and out of relationships. And so these six things, autonomy versus connectedness, favoritism versus impartiality, novelty versus predictability, openness versus closedness, instrumentality versus, uh, versus affection, equality versus inequality, these are the six things that drive us into and out of relationships. And in every relationship, you need to balance it. There have been a few ways tried. Aristotle always felt in dialectics that the good would win. And so if you feel the need for autonomy and connectedness, you should just let those battle out and eventually one of them will win. He saw everything according to a win-lose scenario. Well, that's, that's one way of doing it. And sometimes that is the way it has to be done. You have to give over totally to one of them. There have been other options. There's a cyclical method. A lot of ancient religions have really looked at cycles and, and seen everything as running in cycles. And uh, that's, that's one way. Uh, then the cycle or a pendulum method. One, every, one wins for a while and then the other wins for a while. And so it's still a win-lose, like Aristotle said, but Instead of being constantly one side winning, one side wins and then the other side wins. So there's a give and take. The other option was developed by a guy named Hegel. He says that we can take our two dialectics that are going on and we can kind of bring them together and each of the each side gives a little bit up and you have a synthesis. This is compromise. It's also called a lose-lose. Uh, all compromises are always called a lose-lose. And uh, a lose-lose until you form a synthesis, a new thing. The thing is, in your losses, something is misplaced, and it has to be picked up somewhere else then. And so what happens in the lose-lose, and Hegel's definition in the compromise, is ultimately that, that new thing that you've developed through the compromise, that becomes what later becomes the other part of a dialectic and the fights start all over again. The ultimate goal is to find a way just to hold these in tension. The idea of the paradox is what we always hope for in uh, relational dialectics. Now a paradox can be hard to achieve. I don't think I've achieved it in very many of my relationships. I tend to go actually probably with Hegel's lose-lose most of the time. And really, that's better, in my opinion, than being a jerk and just forcing the win. But it still doesn't make things very easy.